We got this patrol's engine bay just about fully stripped down in the last episode. And the plan at the moment is to do a shaved bay. This means a lot of work, but I want to do this as easy and as fast as I can. Now we have already just about tucked the wiring harness, but there's still a few things that we need to strip out. I'm going to fully remove the aircon system. That way when we are painting, there's nothing in the way. The brake and clutch masters have to come off as well. And one of the major parts that I want to get rid of is the battery tray. Now these are very prone to rusting and you can see mine is in pretty bad shape. A series of spot welds need to be drilled out in order to remove the tray. I basically just use a normal drill bit, but there are special ones designed for this. Now slowly but surely, I am destroying my car, ripping this tray out, and you can see underneath it is in pretty bad shape, so I'm glad that we are removing it. Everything is now stripped out and it is time for the intro. Proudly supported by Superior Engineering, Diesel Conversions Australia, and in part by. All right, the engine bay is just about as stripped as I want to take it. You could go ahead and rip the rest of the stuff off, but I don't really think it's going to matter. I kind of want to paint these booster things anyway. Um, so I'm going to leave them on. We've got the battery tray out. That was a bit of a pain to get out. And you can see it is really quite rusty under here. So I'm really glad that we've got rid of that anyway, because that would have just become a massive issue later on. But as for the rest of the bay, it's pretty well stripped out. Got the lights out, got all the aircon stuff out. Um, the last clutch line that was running across there. Just got everything kind of dangling on the gearbox there. So we can go ahead and start welding up all of these holes. I did ask in the last episode if you guys wanted me to go crazy and uh, weld up the holes. And most of you guys said that I should weld the holes and shave the whole engine bay. A shaved engine bay is pretty much where the motor just looks like it's floating in the engine bay and there's no holes in all of the fenders. This fender has more holes than Swiss cheese. So we've got a lot of welding to do and also where I had to drill out all the spot welds, we're gonna have to tidy all that up. Uh, my chisel went through the wall here, so I'm gonna have to patch that up as well. Something I really don't wanna keep doing on the channel is the same stuff. So I'm trying to mix things up. I think the shaved engine bay is gonna look good. I think you guys are gonna like it. It's gonna motivate me to keep doing the build because it's something that I really enjoy doing. It is a little bit different to what we typically do. It is a full drive. I know that it definitely does not need a shaved engine bay, but I like really tidy full drive. So we're gonna do it anyway. Now there was just a little bit of a concern in the uh, comment section on the last episode about the relay boxes being in the fender arch. And I'm gonna sort of address some of my thoughts just so you guys know where I'm sitting with this thing. Now the main concern that everyone had was uh, water and dirt getting up in here. Now this does actually have a inner wheel arch liner. So as I'm driving in the mud, it's gonna be flicking up, it's gonna be hitting that liner. There won't be any mud getting around uh, these connections at all. If I was ever to do a water crossing, I don't think it would be an issue if these did get wet anyway. I mean, you can wash your engine bay. People flood these cars. It's only a TD42, there's not much to make the car run. Um, there's only three fuses in this box as well, like three little fuses. So there's not too many electronics in a TD42, which is why I decided to go ahead and put it here. A lot of people did say to put it in the cab. I don't really want um, all this wire in the cab. My brother and I have had a GU catch on fire in the back from cables running from the front of the car through into the cab. So I've always been scared ever since I've seen that to put extra wires in the car. So I really like the idea of still having it external just in case something was to catch on fire. Obviously I will be wrapping this up in a really strong thick sheath triple taping it, everything will be sealed. We'll put a water repellent uh, gel in the back of all these plugs so that none of them can get wet. And like I said, even if something does, there's only like three, no, one, two, three, four, four fuses in the fuse box. So I can't see any of that being too big of an issue. And the last concern was if we pop a fuse, how are we gonna change it on the side of the road? I want you guys to think about this. How many times have you blown a fuse? in your car, in the engine bay. I know sometimes in the cab I've had a few, but in the engine bay, I've never blown one of those mega fuses. If I was, if I was to blow the fuse, it's like eight, 10 mil bolts and the fender comes off. You change the fuse over, put the fender back on. Certainly will not leave me stranded. It would more than likely leave me stranded 
because I don't have another fuse to put in there, but that's the case with um, pretty much all my cars. I don't carry those big fuses, so if one was to blow on a track, I would pretty much be buggered anyway. So that's pretty much my train of thought with all this wiring. I'm gonna leave it in the fender. Um, I appreciate everyone saying that it might be a bad idea, but I did weigh everything up before I went ahead and put it there. I really think it's gonna be fine. Now, what we need to do is start patching all of these holes. So you can see there's some threaded and there's some just normal holes. Threaded ones are gonna be quite easy to weld up. You just kind of fill them with weld. These are holes and these larger holes, some of them I'm gonna to have to use a washer and put them in there and then tack the washer to the body and then flap it all back. Up on top of the firewall, there is a few holes where I can't get to the back of them. So I will not be touching those holes. That is simply because if I can't paint the back, it is gonna rust because I'm putting raw metal into the hole. Most of them I can get to though, so there's only gonna be a few of those little scragglers. But uh, yeah, we need to go ahead, start welding everything up so we can um, put some primer in the engine bay, get everything painted. And then we can start putting all that stuff back into the engine bay. If you're wondering what an exploded engine bay looks like, that is how it's going right now. It may look unorganized to some, and that's because it is unorganized, but at least it's all on the same table. So it is now the next weekend. I am back in the shed, ready to finish off uh, the engine bay, or at least get it as far as we're gonna get it in this video. Now, I did have to stop last weekend because my MIG torch stopped welding, and uh, you can't weld up holes if you don't have a welder. So I went out yesterday, bought a new MIG torch, so I'm gonna put that in. Hopefully that fixes it. I'm only sort of assuming it was kind of splattering, and I don't know, it just wasn't welding at all. So new MIG torch, I'll throw that in. Then we've got a few more holes to patch, then we can start the uh, grinding process, which I've already kind of started as well. Um, and then we can move on to what we are moving on to next, which is some boxes over there, which is pretty exciting. First things first, I've got to get this torch in and hopefully uh, this fixes my welder. Diesel, guess what? Adventure Corp give away a full drive every single month. And this month they're giving away an FJ45. Can you believe it? I can't either. There's no way I'd be able to give away this thing. It's just too damn nice. But one of you guys can win it. All you gotta do is go down into the description below and enter. You can do that for as little as $5 and you could be driving away in this awesome giveaway. By doing this, you're also helping me create more content. So it'd be much appreciated. And uh, hopefully one of you guys wins that car. So we'll change this torch over. This thing looks a lot beefier. It is a lot beefier. It's actually rated for a lot more amps than the factory one. So shouldn't get as hot when I'm welding and should be able to handle it. It's quite a bit heavier too, which is generally pretty good. And I think it's a meter longer than my current one, which is also good. All right, we now have a welder. Just got to quickly change the uh, tip size in here because I'm running 
uh, 0.8 mil wire, so I need to put a 0.8 mil tip in. Then we can start welding up the engine bay. Oh, that seems to be working pretty good, so I'll consider that a win. Now, I am welding near glass, which does destroy glass, but I am going to be replacing this windscreen anyway, so don't stress about that. So now I'm going to go through and uh, continue patching up all these holes, and then we can get them sanded back and uh, finally start making some good progress on this build. So that's just about every single little hole welded up and flat back inside the engine bay. Now it's as far as we are going to get uh, in today's video in the bay itself. I don't have any bog and because I want it to be really, really nice, what I want to do is smooth out all the welded and pitted sections including where that battery tray was, it's quite rusted. So we'll smooth all that out with a bit of bog, that way when we paint over the top it's like a dead smooth finish and it's going to look really, really nice. And I'm still undecided what to do with uh, the color. Do we paint it the same color as I want to paint the car or do we just go a uh, nice gloss black in the engine bay? Now the gloss black kind of is winning at the moment just because if I did need to touch it up, I could just go ahead and use a rattle can. It's much easier to match um, gloss black than it is to match any other colors. It certainly is looking a heck of a lot better in here though. I much prefer it with all those holes filled. I don't know who suggested it, but uh, Thank you. But that is a lot of progress made in the engine bay anyway. And next week I'll go and get some bog, we'll get some paint. We'll come in here, sand it, fill it, and uh, we'll kind of finish this off and get it looking like an engine bay again. Now that is not the end of the video. I have something that is really gonna set the mood for this build and get me really excited for uh, what's to come on it. So let's have a look at what I got. Now this is something that I am very, very excited about. Let's open it up and let you guys have a look. These are the wheels that are going onto the build here. Absolutely beautiful. I completely fell in love with these when I seen them and um, I'm very excited to get these on the car, which is what we're gonna do today. I'm actually going to um, get at least four of these together and put them on the car. But guys, look how freaking good that looks. Such a nice wheel. Now the wheels are from All Terrain Industries. They are a 17 by 8.5 Neg 38. So I need this super aggressive offset to suit the patrol because we are putting those flares back on. But these are gonna look amazing on there. They're a machined finish and they are actually a hybrid wheel, which means that you can run them in a non beadlock and in beadlock form. The other feature that I really like is these are painted a metallic silver. I don't know if you guys can see that on the inside of the rim and then they're machined and then they actually go to the effort of clear coating the whole wheel so that you don't get any dulling in uh, this alloy here. It's a really, really awesome feature. I don't think I've ever heard of any other company doing that. The rims that are on the GU, I do have to buff quite often just to get that polished look back in them. Uh, these, I'm not gonna have to do that at all because of that clear coat. Now, we will be running these in the beadlock configuration because I wanna air these down quite a fair bit. And behind it are some 35 inch Max Trek tires. I've already done a few beadlock install episodes. So if you wanna know exactly how to fit beadlocks at home, uh, check out some of those earlier videos that I made. Uh, as for now, I'm just gonna whiz through this so we can get them on the car and uh, see what they look like.
Right, that is five beadlocks done. So I do have a spare, which is awesome. I've actually never had a spare 35 before, even on uh, the GU now, there's a 33. So this spare wheel will jump between the two cars. When it's done for now, it'll go on the GU until this is done. You can see we've got wheels everywhere, but I'm not complaining because they are freaking sick. It took me about three hours to do all five. The troublesome part that I had with the first two was I couldn't get the bead to uh, sit under the ring. So I did figure out a way to do it though. And I'm not gonna tell you because you've all got to go through the same pain as me. So now it is time to get him onto the patrol. Now, obviously there's a lot of parts missing off the car. So we can't look at this like it's completed because it's not even close, but it is gonna just give us that little bit of an insight into how this car is gonna look. We all know wheels and tires, best mod you can do to a car in terms of changing the appearance. They definitely make the car, so don't skimp on wheels. Go to ATI, get yourself some nice bead locks and make your car look freaking sick. Now let's get them onto the car. And uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of talking, aren't I? Not a lot of working, so let's go. Now, in order to fit these wheels, we're going from a 21 mm uh, lug nut to a slimline tapered 19 mm lug nut. You have to do this, otherwise the lug nuts won't go in the hole. So don't get excited, get your wheels home, figure out they can't fit, get the lug nuts in advance. Forgot about the uh, center cap. Boo, boo, boo. I think you can run. Oh yeah, you can run these center caps. A lot of wheels, you cannot run the center caps on the front of a patrol, um, but these, it looks like you can. Never actually seen that before, so that's cool. Holy crap. Have a look at that. That is crazy. I mean, these are neg 38. It's pretty aggressive offset, but on a patrol, we've got these fenders and we've got the wheel arch here. So these will kind of just about poke, I think if I've done my math correctly. And on the back at the moment, I don't have the wheel arch on either. But guys, how good does that look? I've never seen a center cap on the front of a patrol before at least any of the wheels I've ever owned, you cannot run that center cap. So that's why the face of these are pushed out a bit more. So that can sit like that. And I really, really like that idea. Let's keep going, do the other side, and then we can do the back, roll it out and have a look. Man, nothing changes the look of a car like wheels. I mean. Holy crap. It's just gone from like, yeah, it's a build to, it's a bloody build. <laughs> that is some nice friggin' wheels, man. God, massive shout out to ATI for uh, sending me these wheels. If you guys didn't know, ATI was uh, one of the first companies that I ever worked with. It actually was the first company. They believed in me from the very start. I'm super pumped to be working with them again on this build and they did not disappoint. I'm actually probably gonna go inside now and order another set for the GU because I really like these wheels. I think they look so good and the offset is very aggressive. So what I might do is quickly just chuck one fender on and then we can roll it outside and uh, have a geese out in the light. Definitely some good motivation right here to keep going with this build. Quickly chuck this on. Depends how you look at it, if that's legal. I mean, the tread blocks in, but the side wall definitely bulges and the rear will be exactly the same as that, but still very close to being in the guard, which I'm pumped about. I'll most likely continue to cream over this for the next 20 minutes off camera. Then I'll uh, pull it out and give you guys a look.
All right, we are outside and guys, that has to be one of the biggest friggin' transformations ever. I know that you can paint a car and whatnot, but wheels and tires definitely, they just make the car. Diesel's bloody loving it. Really like this back section of the car at the moment because we've done those gull wing doors. I think it looks friggin' sick. And when this thing is done with this shaved engine bay, TD42 right in there, big turbo. Not too big though, not too big, but big turbo. Nice wheels, this thing is gonna be an absolute weapon. Some of you guys have probably noticed that lately I've only been getting a video out every fortnight and that's because I'm trying to pump more content into the episodes. I only get the weekends to film these. So I'm trying to uh, sort of like make, you know, enough of a video to release the episode because sometimes one day isn't enough. But I think in this one we've made pretty good progress even though some of it was boring and welding and stuff like that. But it's all starting to come together. Just have a look at that profile as I'm talking to you guys. In the next episode, what we'll do is uh, hopefully sand and paint that engine bay. I've also got a diff bracing kit, so we might even weld the uh, diff bracing kit in there and start to tidy up some of the chassis and the diffs. I'll do something similar like I did to the GU, where I use like a stone guard and a clear lacquer over the top and then we'll 2K the diffs, make them look real nice. But anyway, that is uh, going to wrap it up, guys. I am gonna go inside. Thanks heaps for watching as always. If you like the content, please drop a like. It really does help. Drop a like if you like the wheels. Drop a like if you like the car. Drop a like because you want to drop a like. Also, check out ATI's wheels if you are in the market for wheels because obviously these things are super nice and they're actually really well priced. I'll let you guys jump on the website and have a look yourself, but uh, they're just about half the price of what I paid for the wheels on the GU and the quality is... Uh, perfect. I will leave a link in the description below for that as well if you want to check out the wheels. But yeah, we'll see you guys in the next episode. I'll probably spend another hour or so just staring at this thing, then I'll uh, muscle it back into the shed and start preparing for next week's episode. We'll see you then.